And I can say that anybody ask me anywhere. I can tell them, yes, when it comes to being evangelical, we're more evangelical than any one of them. But I cannot say we are evangelistic. Are are you still with me? I may have lost some people, but I want you to come back. If you... If, you, if, if I'm saying something you agree with, you say amen. 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 If you're not sure you agree with him, say, well. <laughs> and if you know for sure you disagree with me, say, help him, God. <laughs> okay, don't just be quiet and looking at me. We are evangelical, but I don't believe we are evangelistic. Amen. We believe in evangelism. But you cannot be evangelistic only because you believe in evangelism. Amen? Amen. There was a time that I used to kind of uh, watch Alfreda 30-something years ago. Ah. Knew the type of car she drove. Knew exactly when she got up to go to work. (laughs) Knew the route that she took. But you know what? With all of those things that I knew, that I uh, observed... Innocently. (laughs) Shola will not be here today. Joshua will not be here today. Shante will not be here today. And I can keep going if all I did was just observed. If I just believe in freedom, and I just believe that she was going to get up in the morning and go to fireman's front and drive by, and she's always been very particular about her cars and clean them real clean. We're totally opposite. (laughs) It has to rain for me to wash my car. If I believe in all that, there's absolutely nothing that's going to happen between us if I don't act. And I'm just testifying that not only do you act, you have to continue to act. Because I don't think she liked me the first time. (laughs) I don't know what Pastor Small said about me. Because when I asked him, I wanted to marry your daughter, I took him out for lunch or dinner. I don't remember which one because I couldn't remember. I didn't think I ate anything. I remember the first thing he asked me is, do I have to see my grandchildren coming to Africa? (laughs) And I said, said, well, uh, Pastor, you know only God knows. Well, you know, I would love for you to marry my daughter, but I would love to see my grandchildren here in America. (laughs) But the point is that You have to do some things in order for you to show that I really love you. I really care about you. I want to spend the rest of my life with you. You cannot just pray about it. 
Amen. Some of us get so spiritual. When was the last time you witnessed? I'm praying about it. If you want a husband, you want a wife, keep praying about it. It ain't going to happen. <laughs> we are an evangelical church. But we cannot call ourselves an evangelistic church until we are evangelistic. To be evangelistic is to go out and to witness. Evangelism is to a Christian what learning to talk is to a baby. Do you want me to repeat that? Evangelism is to a Christian what learning to talk is to a baby. How many of you think that you will be happy to have a nine-year-old in your house that's still saying, Daddy, da-da-da-da-da. Kaki, kati, kati, kati. And you have people who have been Christians for 30 years. That's still the way they still talk. When it comes to being evangelistic, they're tacky, tacky, e de de da da, de do do, de do, de de. To be evangelistic, the first thing we have to have is passion for those who are dying, who are going to hell. We have to have passion for them, whether they be our husband or wife or children or neighbors or family members. If you are evangelistic, you are passionate enough. You don't want them to die and go to hell. You don't want them to be eternally separated from God. Do I still have your attention? I was pointing out to our elders and our team leaders at our last meeting on Saturday. That you know what? When we talk about Acts chapter 1. I'm sorry, Acts chapter 2, verses 41 through 47. We're talking about what God can do to a body of Christ who are following God closely. Let's not worry about whether our church is going to grow, is going to be full or not. Let's just do the right thing. Let's love the word of God. Let's love the teaching and the messages and the sermons. Let's love Sunday school. Let's love cell group, Bible studies. Let's treat each other right. Amen. Amen. If somebody does something against you, don't tell six people before that person knows they've done something wrong. Amen? Amen. Amen. Don't gossip about anybody else and don't be a garbage receptacle for people who want to complain about somebody else. If people always come to you to tell you something that's going on with them and somebody else and it's a problem, it's not a celebration, there is a problem. You are a garbage receptacle. Let's 
let's make sure that we know when people in our church are hurting and they are in need and we're there for them and we're not waiting on the pastor to do it. Amen. Some of you saying amen, so you listening to me. I haven't had any wells yet. I said, we always worry about, no, the New Testament, they just did the right thing. And the Bible says, and God added to them. God doesn't want to add to any mess. If you're all messy, why is he going to bring people here? If you don't love one another, why is he going to bring more people here so you can do what you've been doing to each other? Let's work on perfecting living together as Christians and worshiping God together as Christians and loving one another as Christians and let God do his work. When God is looking for some of his children to plug them into a house, he's looking to a house that is good because he's a what? He's a good, good father. He's not going to put them in a place where they're going to mess his children up. Let's do the right thing and let God just add to us as we're doing the right thing. So I'm saying evangelism is not about adding to the church. It's a byproduct. When I go out to witness, when you go out to witness, you should not have this person is going to join Village Baptist Church in your head. All you should have is this person needs to be saved. And I will be there to share Christ with them and you are done. Now, of course, in my class, I do ask people to suggest that they go to a church near them. Because they need to be discipled. Are you still with me? I'm going to make sure I don't go over time. What is the mission of our church? What is our mission statement? Can, Can I have somebody? Yes, go ahead. Tell us our mission. Wait a minute. Where's the mic? Ushers. Yeah, now you get the mic. Please tell us our mission statement. Village Baptist Church exists to win people to Christ and develop them into active disciples, equipping them to serve as ministers in the church community and around the world, leading them to worship God in spirit and in truth. Amen. Come up here. I want to give you something Amen. for doing such a good job. This money was made the year I was born. All right, that's yours. Village Baptist Church exists to win people to Christ. That is our raison d'etre. That is the reason why we exist, to win people to Christ. Everything else is secondary. Are you with me? The reason we exist is to win people to Christ. Of course, we're so concerned about them. We're concerned about them because of what God said in Matthew chapter 28, verses 19 through 20. Who has that? Could you read it for me, Mark? Uh, Get the mic. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you, and surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. Amen. Amen. Thank you. That that is what we call the great commission to the church. We exist to win people to Christ, but we win people to Christ We have to help them 
And that is why we suggest that they go to a church. The New Testament does not know a Christian without a church. Read the whole New Testament. You can find one place in there that says, the church is in my heart. Not one place. The only time that the writers of the New Testament said the church was somewhere was the church in your house. And it is because the church met in your house. So there is no such thing as a Christian on an island. In other words, in philosophy, there is no solipsis Christianity. You're not by yourself. Once you become a Christian, you're part of the body of Christ. And you cannot be the body being apart from the body. Does it make any sense? How many of you think I'm going to look really good if my nose is somewhere over there? I know I do have a big nose, but, you know, it belongs on my head. On my face. Where, wherever. <laughs> it doesn't belong somewhere in Marine City. That's why it's called the body of Christ. If you're part of the body of Christ, you belong in here. Amen. Amen. You don't belong at home watching the Raiders lose. (laughs) I I should have said the 49ers. But I, I knew I couldn't get away with that. The O and H 49ers. <laughs> Are they O and nine now? <laughs> God bless you. <laughs> no, if you part of the that is why we said you develop them into active disciples. And developing them in active disciples means you want to get them involved in Sunday school. You want to get them involved in cell group. You want to get them involved in worship service. You want to get them involved in special training. You want to get them involved in scripture memorization. You want to get them involved in praying. You want to get them involved because God called them out of darkness into his marvelous light. Amen. When you call out of darkness, you need to start learning what the light is. Don't stay in the dark or say you're in the light still doing the darkness things. That's why we need to develop them. And and by the way, I want you to say, I want you to uh, understand what I'm saying here. I'm not saying when a person comes to church, we should automatically think they should be acting like us. Amen? Amen? Because some of us think we're Jesus Christ <laughs> in the flesh. You better be happy nobody knows everything you do. No, God says we develop them. Remember when Jesus met Peter? Peter wasn't even looking for Jesus. Who was his brother? Andrew. That went and dragged that rascal. And said, come see the one that they talked about. He's here. We've seen him. And now, of course, they call him the first pope. And, you know, the Catholic Church worshiping him and worshiping the Pope all the time. But, you know, it's the body of Christ. We exist to win people to Christ. We don't win people to Village Baptist Church. We win people to Christ. The reason why you are at Village Baptist Church is because 
When a baby is born in the hospital, you bring that baby home. That baby is a, is a human being. But you don't leave him out there in the cold. You don't go out of the hospital and say, well, this baby is born now. Let me leave him at the bus stop. You bring that baby home. And why are you bringing the baby home? Because you want to show love. You want to care for that baby. You want to feed that baby. You want to discipline that baby. (laughs) Amen. (laughs) I'm glad I disciplined mine. Hey, that's part of the reason why they turned out good. Amen. 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 If they were to serve all the punishments I gave them, they would still be serving them now. I banished them into their room and said, you're going to be there for 20 years. Go in your room for 20 years. (laughs) And then the next day, I'm taking them to Scandia. That's what a family is like. That's, you know, when you go to a church that the preacher tells you everything you want to hear, that's not a church. That's a kumbaya. God wants you to be disciplined. God wants you to be taught. God wants you to take some time out. Proverbs chapter 29 verse 18 talks about, and I believe it's the most misinterpreted and misunderstood scripture in the Bible. Can you put it up there for me? Did I give you that? No, I'm sorry. Proverbs 29 verse 18. Okay, thank you. And we, we have a good translation in the NIV. But if you're looking at other translation, it, it does say something that says, where there's what? No vision? But the NIV got it right. Where there is no revelation, the people cast off restraint, but blessed is he who keeps the law. So this verse is not talking about no mission statement or a vision statement or the goal. No, if you read it very carefully, it is talking about people being directed and guided by the word of God. When you're not guided by the word of God, you're guided by what somebody else told you. That's why we get confusion in the church. Many churches are led by pastors who preach psychology and sociology. Positive thinking. You hear some pastors preach and they never say the word sin at all. Because congregation don't want to hear it. Just in case you've never heard it from me, you are a sinner. <laughs> I don't preach social gospel that makes you feel good. Amen. There are some things I talk about that ought to make you feel good. Amen. Because the gospel is good news. (laughs) But my focus today is that our one single thing that the church should never miss 
is that God put us here in Petaluma so that we can tell people, we can reach them, we can tell them that they don't have to go to hell because God is there for them. He already paid for the penalty of their sins. And how can we accomplish this? How can we accomplish it? Number one, we can do it. We must all commit to stop thinking about everything under the sun and focus on reaching people for Christ. Amen? Amen. Some of us would die because the church did not agree with you on what color we should paint the auditorium. You think when you, went to, when you go to heaven, God is going to say, why did you allow them to paint that auditorium brown? Some of the most ridiculous things we're going to have a fight over. And we don't fight over people going to hell at all. We need to decide we're going to be obedient to the word of God. That's the first thing we need to do. What's the second thing we need to do? We must all give to make this ministry possible. Amen? Amen. We, don't, we cannot go out and reach out by just going out and reaching out because some of us can't do it. Some of us need to have something in our hand. Like something like this. Have you ever heard of the four spiritual laws? Here. Or do you know we have the four spiritual laws because as the universe is governed by physical laws, so also your relationship to God is governed by four spiritual laws. The, the earth is governed by some laws, like the law of gravity. Even if you say you don't believe in the law of gravity, you go on the top of a building and jump down, you will believe in it while you're going down. (laughs) These things don't come cheap. It costs money. The stamp that you're going to use to put the name of our church, just in case people have questions, we're going to stamp it. It costs money. It tells us that when the judgment was being done in Matthew chapter 25, we read it last week, some people say, Lord, when was I hungry and you fed me? Some of the money you gave, You didn't know who you were feeding? The money you give so that we can have a video presentation on TV, so we can be on radio, we can share the gospel, even though we don't know who is hearing, who is accepting, who is having Jesus in their life. On the day of judgment, say, you know what? That money you gave, 29 people accepted me. And I don't want to put anybody to shame or anything like that. In 2012, I established what they call Evangelism Fund. Only two people have been given to it. Only two in the whole church. Since 2012. We are evangelistic. (laughs) Not only that, what what can we do? We must all be involved in the ministry of prayer. You will know how many members we have if you come here the first, the last Friday of every month. 
when we actually come together as a church to pray one time in a month. If I throw this big Bible on the night, it won't hit anybody. That's how many people are here. But Sunday morning, <laughs> we're praising God. Prayer is the engine of the church. We have to believe in prayer. We have to believe that the people we cannot reach, we can pray for them. The people that already told us to go to hell, we can pray for them and, and we can continue to pray for them even if we can't talk to them. You can share their request with the church and we can pray together as the people of God and see God move. Even when we need people to work, Jesus said, pray the Lord of the harvest so he can send walkers into his harvest field. Last thing before I shut up, we must all be involved. We must all be involved. There's absolutely nobody here who cannot evangelize. If you know Jesus... If you have accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you have absolutely no excuse. Don't just talk about it. Do what Nike said. You are a royal priesthood. You are a holy nation. You are God's people. That you may declare the wonderful deeds of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. I didn't see the pastor's name in there. It says you. If you've been born again, if you've been called by the Spirit of God out of darkness, if you've been convicted of your sin, if you put your faith in Christ, if you've accepted him in your life, you are a royal priesthood. You are also a holy nation. You are God's people. Now so you can just say, thank you, Lord, for saving me. Say that you may declare. You can't declare without acting. The wonderful works of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Let us close our eyes.